Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Long time no see. I've missed you guys. If you've been following my Instagram page, which is my quilts kick ass, there's a link in the description below. Please do follow me because when I'm not making videos, you can see what I'm working on over there. But anyways, I've been working on a big awesome project that I really want to share with you guys today. Um, you'd know from some of my videos and from, you know, different uh, tutorials I've done in the past that I do a lot of t-shirt quilts. There's actually one for a Marine Corps family on the table right now. I'm teaching my neighbor how to make one for her mother-in-law. Um, and I've done lots of different memory quilts with ties. I've done them with baby clothes. I've done them with um, Girl Scout uniforms. All kinds of things can make like really cool memory quilts. But you heard me talk about my local quilt shop, A Stitch in Time. Um, I got a phone call from a customer there who wanted um, a, uh, a quilt made out of military fatigues. So they slung him my card. He gave me a call. And sometime around Christmas, um, he came by and dropped off this giant duffel bag full of fatigues. And you know, when he brought it by, I was like, okay, this is gonna be a front project, this is gonna be cool, but I had no idea like what direction I was gonna go with it, or you know, like what kind of pattern I was gonna use. You know, it's a, this is a lot different than working with t-shirt fabric because there's a lot of heavy duty stitches, it's a lot of dense, heavy fabric. So as you can see, I've got right here, this is the finished quilt. It came out amazing. I've got it all wrapped up, they're getting ready to come pick it up. You can see there's like, I worked in some cool pockets. I think I put in 12 pockets overall and then I used a mix match of the um the dark and the light fatigues and the pattern I ended up settling on is um I recently used the lofty pattern in a quilt that I did well this I had to adapt the lofty pattern to make it work for this but that was my baseline which is basically a rectangle cut on the diagonal and then you do a bunch of rectangles in reverse so anyways I'm also going to be doing a um a pattern review video for the lofty pattern because I really enjoyed it so definitely check that out when that's complete I'll put a link down below as well so anyways back to the fact this thing weighs about a thousand pounds I used a very low loft you know um, cotton batting just because it's already insanely dense I would say the biggest um, struggle with this was really deconstructing the pants so here's a photo you can see the whole quilt laid out came out amazing when I first talked to my client Skylar he had said you know in his mind he had pictured a quilt that was ha the back side was tan and the front side was green you know and that kind of like sounds cool in concept except when you think about it like my neighbor the you know the Marine Corps wife was like who wants that scratchy fabric touching their skin when they sleep plus if I wanted to work in the pockets and stuff there's velcro you know things like that um, and uh, my main concern right off the bat was the density of it that's really heavy we're punching it's it's a big enough deal to punch through one layer of this fatigue type fabric but to go through two and not to mention if there's going to be some of the seams those big heavy duty seams like I'm picturing like one needle breaking after another um, so if you're interested in making a quilt with fatigues I've got a couple tips for you tip number one is um, you need a really good heavy duty sharp sharp pair of scissors and definitely a rotary cutter I actually had to buy a new pair of scissors after this because it just wore them down so I have the two you know he brought me this giant bag probably I mean at least 20 pairs of pants at least um, and some shirts too. So, you know, this giant quilt, as you can see, here's a bigger picture where it's kind of flat. Some of it's folded over the back. Okay, so to complete this quilt, I took the lofty pattern, but I adjusted the size of the rectangle. The lofty pattern is a rectangle cut on the diagonal, right? So you need half of your blocks like this, diagonal cut this way, and then you need the other half of your blocks, mirror image, diagonal cut the opposite way um, so they make that kind of like cool zigzag shape um, I had a total of 87 of these blocks like this plus 12 of the pockets so each of these shirts you know the pockets are on the breast the breast here which made it pretty easy to cut out I had to you know I did get a couple chunky seams I did some of them sideways you know like angled some of them straight up just depending how it was easiest to cut um, but to get the 12 I would need a minimum of six shirts and so I started cutting them up and the first thing I did was I deconstructed all the pants by just cutting them hopefully you can see this I just cut them down the seam line like through the crotch 
you know, and down the side. But these fatigues have this like, you know, really dense, you know, um, uh, seams in them and stuff. And there's actually things like you have to be careful, hidden pockets, there's extra layers of fabric, stuff you can get hung up on. Um, and you know, like the waistband and things are like really, really sturdy. They're clearly made to last. So the first thing I did was I cut all the pants um, into halves so that I could work from there. And then I used, you know, like these nice open swaths of fabric with my, you know, handy dandy, uh, you know, cardboard and, you know, worked through that way using my rotary cutter. So the rotary cutter was great because, you know, it's very sharp. I only use Ulfa blades. I don't like the imitation blades that you get from China. I just don't think the quality of the steel is as good. They're great at first, but they get dull really, really quickly. Like there's no substitute for German steel. So if you've got a rotary cutter, highly recommend Ulfa blades. Again, links for this is all down below because that's all I use. Um, Ulfa, if you're watching, send me free stuff. I could use some uh, sponsorships. <laughs> Anyways, the other thing, you know, the other pieces of clothing that he gave me was like the jackets, right? The jackets were great because they had this big open swatch of fabric in the back that I could get a lot out of. And then they had the pockets. The pockets were a little tricky because some of them are set at an angle. So I did have to cut into some of these heavier seams to get the pockets the way I wanted. But I really, really loved, you know, that they had, you know, these patches. Some of them have his name on them. You can see up close here. Here's a couple pockets that I did. I did some straight. I did some crookedy, you know, I just, and some of them have like the cool embroidery on it. I just, I love adding those like little extra personal details anytime I do any type of memory quilt. You know, it doesn't have to be just t-shirts. You can do anything. One thing about this too that I should mention that's different from the t-shirt quilt is because the fabric is so dense, there's no need for stabilizer. You know, when you make a t-shirt quilt or you're working with say like baby clothes or silk ties or anything like that that's stretchy and movie, you definitely want that extra layer of density there. But with this, it's nice, it's sturdy, it's good to go. Um, so the first thing you like really, really need is you need some serious cutting tools. Don't Don't sit down with like grandma's old scissors that have been around for 50 years that have never been sharpened. You know, if you've got some of grandma's scissors like me, some of these, these babies that are like sharp as a whistle and they've been really cared for, that's great. But again, your hands all day with that heavy duty stuff, it, I had some serious cramps. It took me a couple days, you know, so tip number two, you're going to need to give yourself a good bit of time for this project. One, cramping hands takes time. Two, deconstructing the pants alone is a completely, you know, a whole nother step on top of just sewing the fabric together. Three, you've got to fussy cut a lot of your pattern pieces. Even if you're just doing rectangles and squares, you're working around those dense seams and stuff. That takes a lot more time than sitting down with, say, like a yard of fabric and your rotary cutter and your clear ruler and just, you know, slicing off rectangles or triangles or whatever your pattern calls for. So that's really important. The other like super, super important thing is you have to purchase good needles. You definitely want to get like a denim jeans needle you know something strong something sharp i actually made it through this quilt without breaking a needle which to be honest i was prepared for broken needles you know um, i had to have my machine serviced back in the spring because i'd been sewing so much just whizzing along and i broke a needle which is not uncommon but it was just like the needle that broke the haystack or whatever right camel that what's the thing the straw that broke the camel's back yeah exactly <laughs> you get what I'm saying. So anyways, those are really important. But aside from that, as long as you're prepared for this project, um, it, I think it's really worth it. Like I, I looked on Pinterest and I saw some cool different photos. Like I really liked this one. I thought it was a cool little wall hanging. Um, I really liked how they worked in like a lot of the patches and things, you know, and then there was some that were like super duper um, quilty, you know, patchworky, like this incredibly beautiful work. Um, but you know, this guy is a tough guy. He's a military police officer. Like I feel like, you know, he, I don't want to say that looks grandma-y, like I don't want to be insulting because that this is an incredible quilt that takes a ton of time and, and a lot of skill. Um, but it, you know, it does have kind of a more feminine feel, you know, so maybe that was for a female military person, but um, I wanted this to have like a masculine feel. Also, um, you know, I just wanted it to be simple and cool and it was really important to me to work in the pockets. So I needed to come up with a pattern that worked with the rectangular pocket shape. 
you know, if I'm cutting up willy nilly all these different squares and triangles, I'm not going to be able to work in those pockets. So I had recently just completed a quilt for Tina, my best client ever. You've heard me mention her before. I've done lots of unboxing photos. I just did this one. She had some really cool, like spacey, new agey tarot card type fabrics um, that were so fun in this project. And so I found this pattern. I was like looking for a pattern, looking for a pattern that would make all these weird prints work together. And it came across the loft pattern and um, I realized that I could easily adapt this lofty you know pattern um, to suit this quilt the size the dimensions were off um, but the overall concept worked great so all in all um, I was getting something roughly like eight eight pieces out of each leg panel so and these are medium sized men's okay so medium sized men um, that would be you know roughly about 16 blocks out of each uh or sorry 16 half blocks right out of each pair of pants um and so you'd need you know at least six 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 yeah okay no seven seven pairs of pants each so seven tan pants seven green pants and 12 six six <laughs> six shirts six shirts you guys Woo! I suck at math here I'm gonna print it up here right here for you these are the exact calculations for how many I use to make this quilt here's the final tally boop, boop. <laughs> anyways that's how I did it it came out awesome um, I definitely made quite a few extra blocks because you know sometimes you're sewing along and you realize one had like a hole wear, worn through it which I did like to put in there was some different pieces that had like darned areas where like it, a hole had been ripped and repaired and I thought that was really cool because you know it's someone else's handiwork it's a memory you know blah 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 so I made sure to include those but there were some that came out where I didn't realize there was actually just like a hole that had been worn through you know and I don't want that hole to like shift over time and get bigger and then have the batting poke through so you know I tossed those but it's always great to have some extra also you know when you're trimming down blocks and things sometimes you know you can follow the math as best as possible and then you lay it on the bed and you realize you might want to make a couple adjustments you know maybe one extra row so it has a little bit more of a hang over the side of the bed whatever um when it comes to any type of memory quilt I always try to have a little bit extra. Well, honestly, when it comes to any type of patchwork quilt, quilt that's gonna go on the bed, I always purchase extra fabric or make a couple extra blocks just so I've got some wiggle room. Um, if, you know, once I get down to the end and I'm piecing it all together, you know, I wanna make some adjustments. So anyways, the quilt came out amazing. I was super happy with it. Um, if you guys are curious how much I charged for it, I did charge him $500. You know, I've been getting a lot of questions lately from other sewers about how much I charge for my custom orders. Anytime I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna do something queen size, like it's gonna start at $400 and go up from there. Um, it, it's a lot of work. It's, it's especially when you're getting down to the quilting stage where you actually have to sew through all the layers and you're folding and wrapping it. That's heavy duty stuff, you know? So any of my quilts start a queen size is going to start at 400 so I did charge $500 for this quilt because it was a ton of work to deconstruct everything plus I had to buy a brand new pair of scissors so my client was very happy with that price this is a keepsake that his children are going to be able to keep for years to come it's really quality made um, and overall I think he was very very happy and I was super happy with it so I'm trying to think if there's any other details I left out um, I did use just, like I said, a low loft cotton batting, um, Quilter's Dream most likely. It's a brand I really like, you know, they have a good consistent product. Um, the backing is Kona 108 black, which is what I use for 99.9% .9 of my, um, my memory quilts. You know, it's just soft and nice and it's got that nice big, um, width to it. So it makes it really easy. You don't have to piece any of the backing together. And as far as the quilting goes, um, because this was already so dense and heavy, you know, there's so many lines and blocks. I just quilted along the, um, horizontal seams. You know, I, I did, uh, like I said, it was what a nine by nine blocks or sorry, 11 blocks by nine rows. So we've got nine good stitches 
across the middle um and um and the stitch all the way around and that's definitely enough to hold that density together so all in all you know it was a lot of work and and um and heavy duty stuff but a fairly simple project to complete so if you're looking to you know to make like a really special um um keepsake out of you know for a military person in your life i think this is a really great option so anyways i hope you guys um enjoyed this little rundown of my most recent project um again if you're not following me on instagram please consider doing so because there's a lot of stuff that i'm working on that i don't have time um to film you know single mom special needs mom works three jobs sitting down and actually editing and taking the time to make the videos and get them uploaded for you that's a lot of extra work that's a fourth job in itself so but posting pictures to instagram whether it's my garden or my sewing is something i do very often so if you're curious or you miss me like because i haven't been around for a couple months please check me out my quilts kick ass and you can see the other projects I worked on I did this beautiful custom quilt art quilt um of some the the original inspiration was peacocks but I turned them into kind of like phoenixes I also did a baby quilt for an old friend of mine for her granddaughter um again with batiks and I did this the super cute like little rainbow which I loved which you can see right here and then again um the lofty quilt um for Tina which I loved so definitely please if you're interested in this lofty pattern I'm going to be posting a pattern review um with some more tips and tricks on how I pulled that off so I thank you guys so much for tuning in you know um the confessions of a fabric addict videos are definitely my favorite because I'm passionate about sewing and fabric but I only nobody watches them you know I get like I've got like 25,000 views on my other videos and my confessions of the fabric attic is like 200 views so to you 200 people that keep watching these thank you so much I love you so much you're my people you're my core um and please comment down below any questions anything you'd like to know if you got any um you know, any suggestions too, or if you've made a military quilt, please, please, please share. So, um, I love you guys and I will see you soon. And hopefully I can get together some of these videos I've been working on. And if you're into gardening, definitely, definitely, definitely. It is June. There are some awesome gardening videos coming up finally. So I hope you'll check those out too. Take care y'all. I'll see you next time.